what's going on fishaholics and welcome back to another video today out in Montauk it's a nice beautiful chilly fall day and uh, let's go take a quick look at the water found a fly swatter <laughs> I love coming to the water and just taking a really big deep breath. And right now it's blowing like 10 to 15 and in the next like hour and a half, two hours, it's supposed to drop to about like five to 10. And uh, I think we're gonna try and get out there in the kayak. But uh, for the time being, uh, you know, I wanna, I wanna show you guys a little something. All right, so for today, uh, I'm gonna pretend right now that I don't live out here in Montauk and uh, I'm definitely blessed to have the opportunity to work out here, live out here, fish and film almost every day. And uh, it never used to ever be like that. You know, I used to be just a regular tourist, just like most of you guys, or, you know, a fisherman who would come out here, crash in their car, or would camp, uh, you know, stay at a hotel, or, you know, do all the above just to be out in such a, you know, beautiful place. And, uh, you know, I want to share with you guys <laughs> a deer just snorted at me, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so this is what uh, I wanted to share with you guys. This is the Jackery 240 sent to me from Jackery, and this is basically a portable power station. And, uh, you know, this is something that I really didn't figure I needed until... You know, I started, you know, I started doing some research on it and I figured I really could use this. And when uh, I had the opportunity for Jackery to, uh, you know, send one out to me and do a review on it, I didn't want to turn that down. And uh, just to make it clear, this isn't a sponsored video in any way, just a straight up, you know, straightforward review. And we're going to put this to the test. And here is the first look at the Jackery 240 portable power station. And it weighs about six and a half pounds, 6.6 .6 pounds, I believe. So it's not terribly heavy. It's not terribly bulky. And uh, one really good reason that I really felt I needed this was because uh, right now I, I have a Toyota 2016 RAV4. And my older uh, 1999 Chevy Blazer, I could you know charge GoPro batteries. I could use my laptop by plugging it in. Uh, while the car was, you know, was off, you know, I didn't have to have the keys in the ignition or anything. I didn't have to have the car idling, but with the Rav4, sadly, my newer car, uh, I have to have the keys in the ignition at least turned, so I'm using the battery in the car, or I at least have to be idling in order to get electric power to charge batteries. Which, you know, I, I really don't like idling because, you know, if you're trying to be conservative, especially if I'm, you know, sleeping in the truck, I'm sleeping in the truck for a reason so I don't have to spend money on a hotel if I'm going to a new fishing location or just a new area. And then as well as I don't want to be, you know, deadening my batteries by, you know, using the batteries all night just to charge GoPros and my Sony A6000 uh, batteries and my laptop as well. So that's where I think this thing is going to come into play. And uh, right now we're going to put it to the test. I have two GoPro batteries to charge. My laptop is dead. My cell phone is at 49%, so I guess we could charge that a little bit. And uh, I guess in the meantime, while we're charging, I'll maybe uh, edit a video f that you guys probably have already seen. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I charged this last night. It took about six and a half, seven hours to get it fully charged. And now we're gonna basically see how much battery it uses up or how far it goes down with uh, all the different stuff I'm gonna charge. So first I'm gonna start by plugging in my GoPro charger and we are charging. Also plug this in for my laptop. All right, so as you can see, laptop is dead. Okay. So it is 10.50 a.m. I'm gonna start a timer just, you know, because why not? So we'll time how long it takes to charge some of this stuff. And then I'm also gonna just plug my iPhone in. We're at 50% so that'll get up to 100%. And uh, don't worry, this isn't just gonna be a review video. We're gonna get out there and catch some fish. I promise you that. But really, we're waiting for the tide, waiting for the wind to lay down a little bit. I gotta tell you, this fall, it's been 
like crazy windy out here. There's been very little chances to get out in the kayak. And I also brought my electric skillet, which I kind of want to see if we could put the electric skillet with the jackery and cook up some fish. So that would be pretty badass. All right, so this is pretty dope. Uh, portable power at its finest. I could definitely see it being great for campers and, you know, outdoor enthusiasts alike, you know, pretty much just to have power when uh, you can't, as well as even an emergency. Say the power goes out in your house and you maybe even watch TV. I think you can power uh, a t television, like a 32 inch television, with this uh, 240 Jackery for up to about three hours. So that's you know, pretty cool. All right, so it's 12.55, so basically two hours, and my laptop is at 97%, and we edited with it for probably about an hour and a half, and then, you know, I stopped and, and you know, got the kayak ready for about 30 minutes, and the GoPro batteries are charged. I'm also charging uh, my Sony A6000's battery. This is probably almost fully charged. And my phone, I charged up all the way, like in the beginning. And it was funny that the phone charged up within like the first 30 minutes and went up 50% to about 100%. So then I unplugged it. And then that's when I plugged in my uh, Sony A6000 battery. And the GoPro batteries, I don't know like when exactly they were finished charging. Something I think is wrong with um, the charger because I, I, I was wondering why it was taking so long for the lights on here to turn green and then I just popped the battery out and popped it back in and it turned green. So this was probably charged uh, a lot sooner than what the uh, indicator was, was showing. But uh, if we unplug everything here, the Jackery is at 42%, so less than half. And I thought it, it wasn't gonna go down that much, but when we were editing, I had my brightness on my laptop all the way up, so that probably doesn't help. Um, I could definitely see it working a lot better if, say, you know, you charge the laptop, like if I went out fishing, charged my GoPro batteries, charged my laptop without using it, and then came back, unplugged it, it probably would be better for the Jackery than for, uh, to, you know, edit while you're plugged into the Jackery. And we still got a little bit of juice left. I'm going to turn it off and continue getting ready, and then we're going to hit the water. Before we fish, actually, we're going to use the Jackery one more time. Alright, so I just did both tires and now we're at 41%. Pretty cool. Let's catch some freaking fish now. Feels great to be out. This is what I consider a fly con day. This is hard to come by in uh, the summer, a day like this, let alone it's November now. To get a day like this where the wind dies down and it's nearly flat out here, you live for these days, or I do at least. We're gonna keep heading into the rips, probably start with the umbrella rig, and then once we get to maybe a bottom fishing spot, we'll, you know, try a little bucktail like this or maybe some small metals, see if we can get a sea bass. And if not a sea bass, then a porgy or something else, all of the above, really. Whew. I'm getting a workout now. We're lucky we got out here when we did because another 30, 40 minutes and this rip would be really ripping. And uh, we'd be barely, like really barely able to make it up way. At least uh, we're moving about, I don't know, like a mile and a half up tide right now, but we're pedaling three. It's like there's a difference between bottom speed and ground and water speed. <laughs> so we're kind of pedaling really hard and our, t our wheels are spinning a little bit, but we'll, we'll get up there to the spot. Wow, this is an unbelievable day for November. Just look how freaking flat it is. 
around the same time last year I had one day in November that it was like this flat and calm and uh, that was a great day there was a ton of bass here they were popping on top caught a ton of fish now it kind of seems lifeless I'm not really marking much but you never know like right as that sun gets I don't know an hour probably down from the horizon you know things might start popping off a of school of bass might swim by and push some bait to the surface let's switch over to jigging See that stuff right there, that could be like black sea bass on you know, some type of bait near the bottom, could just be a clump of porgies. Probably not bass, bass would sit a little bit higher from the bottom, it's probably some type of bottom fish. There's something. Oh man, Stripa. Marked some stuff down there, but I was hoping a sea bass. What's up, little squirt? I gotta squeak my way back up to where those fish were. All right, I took off the bucktail, decided to put on a little diamond jig. That'll get to the bottom a little bit quicker in this uh, strong current. And we drop right on top of these fish and either, you know, catch the bass, striped bass, or, you know, black sea bass. Black sea bass will hit a diamond jig. Black sea bass are one of the least pickiest fish. They'll pretty much eat anything they can get in their mouth. There's one. Right off the bottom. Really short and skinny. Oh, there he goes. I'm surprised these fish aren't fatter, you know. The season is coming to an end. These fish should be fattening up. All right, well, at least we caught a couple bass. I drifted back inside here just to kind of see if anything was here. And we're gonna go back to the umbrella rig real quick. Hooked up on something. I was messing with the GoPro and didn't have the rod in my hands. Something really tiny. Might be a sea bass, you never know. Probably a schoolie striper though. Yep, little schoolie. See you later bud. Finish your fall run. All right, well, we may have failed in catching something we could eat and uh, cook up on my electric skillet, but uh, we may not have been you know, struck out because I do have an egg in my car because I was planning on frying any fish with my electric skillet and the jackery if we caught any, but I do have an egg. So I kind of want to just see like, if you can even fry anything. So we'll fry an egg and uh, <laughs> see how it comes out, see if the jackery can cook it. We're definitely time crunching a little bit, but we're gonna make it happen. You know, that sun went down really fast. And it's gonna get dark really soon, but it doesn't take long to cook an egg. 41% still. We're gonna plug this baby in. Hmm. It's going on for a second, but it's not 
turn it on. All right, I see the predicament. The electric skillet is 120 volts and the Jackery goes up to 110 volts on the AC outlet. You need a more powerful or more voltage to use that electric skillet, which I understand, but uh, dang, like I was looking forward to being able to just say, go anywhere on a fishing trip and then catch fish and do like a really, like a simple catch and cook, like, you know, right on top of my car, right on top of the kayak, like that would have been pretty cool. But uh, I mean, all in all, um, one of the biggest things that I could see myself using it for was, you know, charging my GoPro batteries, my camera batteries, my laptop, and it does that. Um, so definitely a thumbs up. Uh, not being able to, you know, cook with the electric skillet, uh, you know, it's, I can't give it a thumbs down, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that, um, you know, a Jackery that has a higher voltage would work, uh, you know, perfect. But uh, for the 240, um, you know, it's a little too much. Anyway though, it's a pretty cool gadget and I'll put more information about the Jackery 240 down in the description below. And as well as my Outback rig and as well as my tackling equipment, I'll put that all down in the description below. And uh, you know, it was a great day, beautiful day. At least we got out there. And uh, that's pretty much what it's all about, just getting out there. Even if the fishing's not gonna be the greatest, you know, even if you're not gonna catch anything, just getting out there and trying it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And like always, never forget, live to fish, fish to live. And I'll see you guys in the next one.